Hi guys, Peter Finch here, teaching professional down at Trafford Golf Centre in Manchester. And I'm just doing a, well, not slightly a quick video today, more of a longer video today. After the video I posted, just saying thank you and asking for inspiration for this next month of videos about a 15 minute warm up session you can do prior to going out onto the course just to get yourself better prepared for the round and get you striking it better before you actually go out and play. So I've got my watch, I've got 50 balls with me, I think that's all you're going to need within 15 minutes. And I've got an array of clubs to go through as well, an array of shots to go through just to get me better prepared for my kind of round as well. So I've got my watch on, I'm starting for 15 minutes and I'll just talk you through a decent kind of pre-round routine. Okay, here we go. Now, the first thing we've got to be doing is just a couple of stretches to loosen yourself up. Now, I've not got much time to go through a full, a full yoga routine, but there's a couple of stretches that you can do just to really loosen the body up before you actually start hitting the ball. The dead simplest one to do, and one which kind of gets all the muscles moving that you need, is to get a club, pop it across your back, get into a solid posture position, and then turn the shoulders away while maintaining kind of the lower half. So you don't want the hips to come around with the shoulders. Turn the shoulders away as far as you can go, keeping the lower half nice and stable. Now, some of you won't quite have the flexibility in the kind of lower half, the hamstrings and the hips. So you will find that you twist around a little bit, but just try and keep those knees flexed and that lower half as stable as possible as you turn away. Just hold it for two or three seconds and then mimic the swing coming through the ball. You want to be doing this four or five times, just really loosening up, then through, like I said, a nice solid posture, just like you would on the course. Use that club just to help twist you around that little bit more, then coming down and through, then just one more, and then through. So that's a very basic stretch, just to get the main kind of muscle groups loosened up and ready to go when you're actually starting to strike the ball in a moment. Just one more thing I'd probably say, probably the main kind of t cause of tightness in the lower back is probably the hamstring. So if you do throw a couple of hamstring stretches in there, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. So knees and legs relatively straight, just bending down, just trying to touch the toes. Again, this isn't something you might not be, you might not be able to do this if you've not got a great amount of flexibility, but the more you do it, the more flexible you'll become. So again, just four or five of those, just popping down, just holding that position, just allowing yourself to come back up. A couple more times, and then just allowing yourself to come back up. So you don't need to be too kind of strained when you're doing it, just nice and relaxed. Those few stretches, it'll get your body kind of in the right order and just ready to fire into the ball. So after a few of those, always start off with the lower clubs. So I've got my 56 degree sandwich here. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be picking a couple of targets just at short range, just hitting a couple of short chips and pitches, just concentrating on trying to get the strike down onto the ball. When you're actually warming up for a round, you don't really want to be thinking too much about kind of technique. You don't want to be thinking too many things as far as swing thoughts go. All you want to be doing is just trying to keep your rhythm nice and smooth and just trying to make a decent kind of connection with the ball. So like I said, it's not, this is not the time to be kind of giving yourself a bit of a lesson. All you want to be doing is just relaxing, just thinking about your rhythm, just trying to be nice and smooth. I released a video um, earlier on this week about driver rhythm, so there'll be some links coming up here. But what I try and imagine when I'm trying to get a nice rhythm before the round is just picture one of my favourite players, so kind of Freddie Couples with his rhythm, and just try and mimic it. Just try and mimic that little bit of a rhythm. So I've hit a few little short sandwiches there, just about 20 yards or so, just trying to get it landing and checking, just concentrating on the strike. Now I'll move on to a few longer pitches, so about 50 yards or so. Just always to a target. Just trying to pick a target out, clipping it down there. Again, I'm not thinking too much about my technique at this point. All I'm trying to do is get a lovely rhythm. With the pitching, a little bit of weight forward, hands ahead, feet and hips slightly open. Just focusing on clipping that ball away. So I've just had a couple of pitches there, just trying to get my in at that distance. And then I'll have a couple of pitches, three quarter in length. So now I'm starting to move on to the fuller swing lengths. So just a few pitches, three quarters in length. Just knocking in down there. Trying to keep very nice and relaxed. 
This is actually good practice for me because I'm actually going out on a round uh, shortly with Rick uh, Shields. Check out his channel if you've not, I'm sure you already have. But there should be some links coming up to those rounds as well. We're going out to play Marriott, so this is uh, good practice for me as well as you guys. So I just hit a couple of pitches there, and they're all going pretty much the same distance. So I know my eye is in with my distance as far as my wedges go. So that was my sand wedge. And now I move on to my pitching wedge. So this is where I start to kind of extend my swing, get a little bit fuller. So I'm with my pitching wedge. I'm getting lined up to a target. And I'm just having one swing. Again, just focusing on the rhythm. Just trying to hit it as straight as I can down my target line. Now what I'll do then is I'll get my alignment sticks. And I'll actually focus to a few different targets around the range. This is really, really important because as you get out to the course, you're not going to be able to carry the mass around with you if you are practicing on a, a kind of a driving range mat or if you've got a grass driving range, this is even better. But using an alignment stick just to pick out a few different targets on the range, this will help you get in kind of game mode. It'll help you picture your shots a little bit better and get aligned better as well. Because one of the most important things you want to be doing on the course is not so much technical swing thoughts, but getting your setup right, getting your basic technique right with your stance, your setup, everything, the fundamentals of the game. Those need to be bob on if you have any chance of playing well. So I'm just going to stick this down pretty much where I'm aiming, just with the mat for this kind of demonstration purposes. But as you're actually on your mat or on your range, you can move it around to different targets to get your alignment bob on. So all I need to do, just hit a couple more wedges. This again is just easing me into my full swing. Just easing me into my full swing rhythm. Again, I'm actually hitting it pretty well. <laughs> Just slightly worrying, Rick. Should be worried about our round later on. <laughs> okay. So those are my wedges and that's me loosened up. Now, I'm going to start moving on to my longer clubs now. I've got my A time. And what I tend to do with these clubs is I pull three balls out and then I want to be playing three different types of shot. So I've got my alignment to my target. I'm going to pull my first ball across. I'm going to line up straight, get all my setup correct. I'm going to swing it away. Just focusing on my rhythm. Just trying to hit it as straight as possible. Slightly left there, but not too bad. So just trying to focus on my swing rhythm. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the same target, but I'm going to try and hit a little fade. So I'll open up my stance slightly. Club face aiming between where my body's aiming and the target. And I'm just going to try and hit a little cut down to the target now. Again, just focusing on my rhythm. Just trying to keep it smooth and silky. And that was a pretty decent fade down there. And on this one, I'm going to try and to draw. So stand slightly closer to the target. Club face in between where I'm aiming and my target to the right hand side. Trying to hit a little draw. Not too bad. So what I've done there is I've put myself in a game situation. I've got a target, trying to hit a draw, trying to hit a fade, trying to hit a straight shot. Those shots that you might need once you get out onto the course. So that's my eight iron. How are we doing for time? Not too bad. I'm gonna pull out my six iron. I'm gonna do exactly the same. So pull a little bit further forward in my stance. So see, I've gone from my eight to my six iron. I'm gonna to go to my four iron in a moment. So stagger the clubs quite equally. So a couple of sixes. So that's my straight one. Now I'm going to hit a little bit of a fade. Eh, not the best strike, but moving through the air. And again, my swing thoughts here to a minimum. The only thing I'm thinking about is just trying to get a little bit wider on the backswing. That's my only swing thought today. And I'm going to stick to it. That's important. Stick to the one swing thought on the day. Love a little draw. Oh, my sorry, draws. So that's my six iron done. Shifting onto the four stick. Yeah, again, those three balls. A little bit further forward in the stance. Nice straight shot to begin with. And shifting onto the fade. 
Same target yet again. Oh. Best fade of the day. And a little bit of draw, so this is probably going to be the toughest shot. I'm going to face today, draw with a four. Ah. My goodness me. A rare vein of form that I've struck. So, I've gone through the four iron now. I'm going on to the fairway wood and then onto the driver. Now, I'm going to do things slightly differently with the fairway wood and the driver. I'm not going to try and fade it, draw it, hit it straight, but I'm going to go through three distinct swing rhythms because that's basically what I'll need when I'm out on the course. I need a very smooth swing, I'll need a little bit of a power swing, and then I'm going to have an ultimate kind of distant swing as well. So this will really loosen up the body, but it will get me prepared for my different types of shot again that I'm going to need on the course. So on this one, my nice smooth swing. This is the one that I'll hit most of the time, just down the fairway, off the tee or into a par five. Just a smooth, smooth rhythm. Stuck a new three wood in my bag actually, got an RBZ Tour. A little bit higher on the loft with this one. Just lofting up experiment. Tailor made, they do know how to sell clubs. So, that was my kind of smooth rhythm swing. Just gonna ramp it up a little bit now. So I want a little bit more distance, I'm just gonna try and quicken my hip turn on the way down. So a little bit more distance there, a little bit more height, a little bit more power. And on this one, really going to go for it and smash some away. This is my top swing rhythm here. Really nailed that one. Slight fade on that one, but not in any kind of real danger. Not bad club either. So, that's the fairway wood out of the way. Driver, yet again. It's exactly the same thing, but notice I'm going to the same target every time. It's feedback every single time. And that's important because here, if you're over this ball and you're consistently hitting a little fade, that's how you should probably approach it on the course as well. That's what Sam Sneed used to say. Sam Sneed used to play with a draw, a little bit of a pull. And his simple solution was if he was on the range and he was pulling it, that day he'd play with a little bit of a pull. I, want to, I would not suggest doing it all the time. Obviously, you want to be working on your technique, but not bad advice. Certainly worked for Sam, so who am I to argue? Now here we go, just with the driver, it's exactly the same, first one, smoothest swing I can muster. A little bit pulley, so that would say to me that I think I need to ramp up my swing speed just to get the most out of this club and out of the shaft. So we're going to extend that swing speed a little bit more. That's more like it. I'm going to do the one, just in case I really need to smash one out there during the round. And this will prove the real loosener to the old back and the old muscles. Smash down there, okay. Now I've hit my second two where I've actually ramped up my speed a lot better than I've hit my first, so I think that's probably how I'm going to approach the shot. So, that's all my clubs hit. Now I've got a couple of minutes left kind of for my range bit. So I'm just going to take out my sand wedge, I'm going to take this away, and I'm going to put that little bit of feel back into my hands just by going to a very, very short target. So just as you would, just on the side of a green, just chipping it forward, letting it roll on a little bit, just getting that touch back in your hands. Just popping it away. Now I've been left here with about 20 balls or so, so I've not managed to get through that 50, but you don't need to. You don't want to be knackering yourself out just before you go out onto the course. So there's a little bit of a wristy one there just to get the feeling in my hands. A little bit of a stiff arm swing. Just going through my full kind of repertoire. And there we go. I think I'm pretty much prepped and prepared. Now, we've actually got kind of a couple minutes left, so what I'll probably do is actually go over to the putting green just before I go out and have a few putts, and I think that's what we'll do. In the last kind of two minutes remaining, we'll pop over to the putting green, have a few putts, and then get you straight out onto that tee. So I'll see you in a second.
Hi guys, so we just had our warm up inside. So what we've done, we've just come to the putting green. Normally the last thing we go onto before the first tee, just to try and get our touch and our feel on the greens. Now what I don't want you to do, and what I see a lot of people doing, is getting three, four balls out of the bag, going to a single hole, just trying to get a few putts in to try and boost the confidence. The best way to get prepared for a round, as far as putting is concerned, is get yourself in a game situation. So pick yourself a 12 foot putt, a 15 foot putt, whatever it'll be, but just go through your routine that you're gonna be using out onto the course. So for this kind of length of putt, I'll have a bit of a longer one. I'll have a bit of a longer one just up to this hole. That's all I'm really bothered about. I don't actually hit that many short putts when I'm on the practice screen. I'm more worried about pace on the longer ones, especially if I've got a limited amount of time. So what I'll do is I'll give myself a random putt, so I can see this just slightly, maybe inside the right edge. So I'm gonna line up my putter to that. I'm gonna go through my routine that I'll be using out onto the course. Just a couple of practice strokes, just trying to feel that pace, feel that rhythm. And again, for this type of length of putt, I just wanna get the pace right. If it goes in, it's gonna be an absolute bonus. And I might be having a bit of a fist pump around this green. But I'm making sure my posture, my setup, everything is bang on and then I'm just trying to get the pace right. Just trying to get it rolling up towards that hole. Should drift in a little bit, nah, bang on line. Not too bad though. Oh God, I love that, I was so funny. <laughs> that would have been fist bumps all around. However, that is just a routine you want to be using before you go out. I tell you what, five or six of those puts from different distances is about, it's 100% more beneficial to just staying over a three foot put, just trying to knock him in. Use the whole of the practice putting green that you have. Pick different holes, go through your routine, get yourself in a game mode before you go out onto the course. Game situation, game mode, get yourself tuned in. Now what we're gonna do, just gonna head back inside, say thanks, uh, and just have a kind of a little bit of advice when you get onto that first tee, because it's a bit windy and a bit cold out here. So we'll go back inside. So come back inside where, say, on the kind of first tee, I've got my driver out here, so say it's a par four. But this is where like the practice and the little kind of a pre-round routine come into play and you can start to nail it away. What you want to be remembering is the tempo that you had. You want to be remembering the good shots that you had before the round, getting into that nice rhythm, that nice feeling. And on that first tee, pay particular attention to your pre-shot routine. So you want to be lining it up properly, making sure you pick out your target, really focusing on that, getting into the side of the ball. We've already had a few kind of practice swings. Getting into the side of the ball, getting in a solid posture, and then just using that lovely tempo, that lovely rhythm you've just worked on to blast the ball away. Ah, well. Hopefully I can carry on like that. Right. right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this uh, video is interesting, a little bit different than what I've been doing recently. So that you can take these tips onto the course, do it your pre-round little routine. It's only 15, kind of, well, maybe just over, about 16, 17 minutes long, that. So I can do a longer one if you want, guys. Uh, please like, um, please leave some comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Have a look around. There's some decent stuff on there that can help you with the rest of the game as well. So thanks very, very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you down here next time. I've got a list of videos to get through uh, with my thank you video for my thousand subscribers. I'll add an annotation and a link in there so you can have a little bit of a look at that video as well. And leave me your thoughts, leave me your comments. I'd love to hear back from you, I really, really would. So cheers for watching and I'll see you down here next time. Enjoy your next round using that routine, hopefully. <laughs> All right guys, see you later.